And this morning we're going to take a look at our first fruit, which is the fruit of joy. The fruit of joy. We're going to hear a reading now from the book of Acts, which is the record of the early church. And the early church um, was under incredible persecution because it had burst on the scene as this, this incredibly distinctive uh, tasting new community that was on a different line. It had goodness at its heart when the Roman Empire was so harsh. Um, it had kindness at its heart when pagans were throwing people out on the streets because of sickness. Um, there was a way that this community treated each other that was along the lines of what Jesus had begun and it had become revolutionary. Um, and because of this, um, we meet uh, the, Paul, actually, and his colleague Silas um, in the city of Philippi. Um, and this reading um, takes account of uh, um, a, a situation where a woman had been following them every day um, who was uh, demonically um, uh, possessed and uh, into deep occult and witchcraft. Um, that people were making money from her because of some of the uh, things that she was able to do and to produce. But she was following Paul and Silas and she's, she was basically saying, these men have come to talk to you about the Son of God. And Paul was getting a bit really annoyed about this. And after many days, it says, he turned around and he, he commanded this evil spirit to leave her. And the, the, the whole 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 sort of genre left her and 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 of course the business that was connected to her completely folded and the her owners were absolutely outraged they went and found Paul and Silas and they grabbed them and they threw them into jail but you see jail back then uh, wasn't uh, wasn't as clean and and as tidy as today the dungeons were cold. Uh, you'd get beaten uh, before you were put in jail uh, with, 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 blood, with, with wounds down your back that were never treated. Um, uh, your clothing would have been damp, would have been, would have been blooded. You were thrown into these dark um, dungeons. There were no toilets. So you can imagine the stench. You can imagine the conditions. And Paul and Silas, it says they were putting them, they put in the inner dungeon where they would have been, um, would have been clasped around their, around their wrists and around their ankles and fastened down into this dark, uh, um, dank, uh, painful cell situation. And we pick up this story. And as you hear this, hear this account read to us over these couple of moments, I want you to identify and um, see whether you can pick up two kinds of joy in this story. Um, and the other thing is, is just the power of praise and the power of singing and our worship to God. I wonder what you notice from this. After this reading, we're going to take a moment to worship and love God and I would, uh, I would invite us, whatever your circumstance, however you're feeling today, let's come and give our praise to God. I'll see you on the other side when we're going to unpack what does joy look like in our lives today. Welcome back. So here's the thing. Most of us have no idea that there are two kinds of joy. Now, joy, I don't know about you, but is a powerful emotion. Uh, to be honest, it feels over this last 18 months uh, that there has been a general lack of it around. Um, and I don't know about you, but sometimes uh, joy can feel uh, that. And it is. It's an emotional response uh, to circumstances happening around us. I never forget the time. Uh, that my parents brought my sister and I a BBC computer. Oh my goodness, it was incredible. We were so excited. I mean, we didn't really know what to do with it. Um, we could program it that a line, a dot could go across the screen after a full Saturday's uh, programming. 
and it just felt so excited. We had made this, we were filled with so much joy. Um, or it could be the joy of a relationship. It could be the joy of uh, the satisfaction um, of, of, of seeing your garden grow. You know, where's the places that give you and bring you joy? Um, we all have those places and oh man, we need to dig into those places. But joy is a response so often to ex external things happening in certain ways. And we look forward to those events and they're events that we reflect back on. We, they are events that happen to us either accidentally or by design as something um, anticipated. Uh, the power of joy um, is part of what makes us human, where we can feel delight, we can feel satisfaction, happiness, of something anticipated, something experienced or something reflected upon. It's the quality that turns our grey world into technicolour. But here's the thing. Most people don't realise that there are two kinds of joy. Joy based on external experiences and joy that comes from internally, from within. Many of us have confused joy with emotion. R uh, Rick Warren, the well-known pastor of Saddleback, he describes joy in a way that I don't think you're immediately thinking about. And this is this kind of joy he describes is a Christian kind of joy. It's a joy that is a settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life. The quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right. And the determined choice to praise God in every situation. And I tell you what, this is why I love this account from the prison cell in Philippi. Did you notice the two kinds of joy at play in that episode? The, 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 the most obvious joy was at right at the end of the account when the jailer and his family had been physically saved but also spiritually they had discovered the love of God and the salvation of God in their lives and they rejoiced at their salvation and that was the kind of joy and delight that we get filled up with as a result of something. But the other kind of joy is the kind of joy which we initiate out of choice because it's something that is birthed from within us, not from outside of us. Emotion around joy is temporary. But did you notice how poor Paul and Silas's response in in the prison cell, in that place of lockdown, in that place of, of being stripped of their freedoms, that place of being unjustly accused of mistreatment, of no fair trial, uh, that place of pain, that place of squalor, what were they doing? Were they complaining? Were they moaning? Were they, were they playing out a victim mentality? No, we see them rejoicing, we see them celebrating, we see them choosing to praise God in the middle of their adversity. Utterly incredible. They chose to put joy into employment. It wasn't a reaction, it was an action. And this is what I want us to realise, that there are two kinds of joy. There's the joy that we experience as a result of great things happening and things that we find delight in. And scripture gives permission for that. It validates this. As humans, it says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. 
because it's such an amazing place to be. Um, enjoyment uh, from different things. And God's created this good stuff for us to enjoy and to find that sense of pleasure and satisfaction from. But those things can be temporal. But there's another kind of joy which I want you to walk away today knowing about. And that is the joy of the Lord himself. It's God's joy, his own joy, which he wants to give you. And it's like going from fossil fuels about to run out to going to wind power, which is an eternal source of empowerment and joy in our lives. Um, and do you say, Tim, how do you know this? Well, there is the word used for joy um, that relates to God's kind of joy. God's joy is only found twice in scripture. And it's found in Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 11 and 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 27. And the account in Nehemiah is when they've come to the end of their building work and they have realigned the community back onto the, on, in, onto the lines of God. And, and, and Nehemiah says, do not be dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Chronicles 16, 28 says, honour and majesty surround our God. Strength and joy fill his dwelling. Now this joy is called Shedva in Hebrew, which is only found twice in covenant connection with God. And it's, and it's, and it's a unique joy that's possessed by God. It's the God joy. It's his joy. And the, the, the whole imagery behind the, the, this Hebrew idea of Chedva is to behold a doorway in the fence. To behold a doorway in the fence. Now, I had the privilege of staying in some friends of ours um, lodge. And I'd gone up for a walk up the hillsides uh, behind where the lodge was and made up onto the onto the hilltop and great views, absolutely fantastic. And I'd, I'd seen this way down, which I thought would be great. I thought it would be a bit of a shortcut, would be great. So I came gallivanting down the hillside, found some tracks down and came into this whole kind of um, uh, valley side of bracken. Um, coming down and I could see the road fantastic absolutely great so came shimmying down and I was going to be home back back to the lodge soon and I suddenly came up to the bottom and oh my there was a fence all, all the way down a sheer fence um that I that sort of escaped my notice and I kind of walked along it for a while but there was no exit and it felt like oh my goodness so I had to go all the way back and I thought, what am I going to do? So I retraced my steps. And anyway, eventually I kind of went along, along and I found the track that's quite a long way off. There would have been a way through, but it was way beyond what I wanted to do. So I kind of came through my way down another track, another way. And I came to the, the back of some people's gardens and um, I was, just couldn't find a way through. Anyway. Just at that moment, some dogs came out of the, the back door of his house and there was a stile. There was a way through um, to get down through, uh, through through this back garden. So this gentleman came out and he could see me kind of getting, getting a bit lost, not finding a way through this fence. And uh, so we, we, we struck up an exchange and I explained to him my predicament. He said, do you know what? just come through so it was incredible I was such a buzz because the idea of going all the way back up and all the way around again would have been a nightmare and I tell you what the the elation I felt at having found a way through was incredible and this is 
when it comes to God, this is such a great example because when it comes to the God kind of joy, this is such a great example. Because the joy of God, when it comes to a relationship with you, is based on the fact of his utter delight and joy that he found a way to save you and to bring you back home. And this is God's joy, his joy to us, the joy of his salvation. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17 says, In your midst, your God Yahweh will save. He is going to find a way through. The mighty one, with gladness over you, he will rejoice. With his love, he will quiet you with singing over you he will rejoice can you get a picture that just like i was filled with so much joy about finding a way through that god has so much joy because in christ he found a way through to saving you to your world to your life and God's joy is a constant power of wind source of power, of, of, of nuclear force, of ongoing power. And do you know what? Our capacity of, for joy is a bit like a tank. And Jesus started talking about this in, chap, in, in um, or John records Jesus talking about this in John chapter 15 and John chapter 17. And Jesus says, these things I have spoken to you, and he's talking to his disciples, that, met, that, my, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. And this is what I want us to take away. There's a certain amount of joy that you will be able to fill your own tank with a joy of, and delight from God's amazing creation, the joy of living our lives in, 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 in unison with God's great commands for our lives. Because when we live in God's way, we live with minimum regret. However, Jesus recognised that that will only get us so far. And he comes to offer us his, his joy into our worlds. Let's go back to Rick Warren's definition of joy. Joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of your life. The quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right and the determined choice to praise God in every situation. And that is what we find Paul and Silas doing in that prison cell. They are saying we are going to rejoice because we know that this attitude is going to work around for our deliverance and that God is in control. We will not be dictated to by our circumstances. We are going to, in God, dictate the circumstances around us. We will not be the tail, we are going to be the head. Jesus says, I'm going to place you above and not beneath. As we receive God's joy burning on the inside of us. And, you know, it was said of Jesus um, in Hebrews chapter 1, 9, that because Jesus loved righteousness and hated wickedness, he had aligned his life with God. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you and covering you with the oil of joy. There was a joy about Jesus that was contagious. Charles Spurgeon says this, the that the grace of joy is contagious. Holy joy, will, holy joy will oil the wheels of your life's machinery. 
Holy joy will strengthen you with for your daily labour. Holy joy, God's kind of joy, will beautify you um, and give you an influence over the lives of others in a positive way. Do you know what? God wants to get give you his joy. You say, well, Tim, how can I receive this joy? How can I get into this joy within my life and within my world? Well, first of all, I want to say it's a fruit and a dynamic that the Holy Spirit is growing in you. And I found in my life that several things that have generated joy. First of all, it's a joy of a covenant connection with God where he has found a way to me and I have found a way to him. And the two become connected together. And even living in the source of that relationship, there is a joy. I was filled with the Holy Spirit when I uh, and and have gone on being filled with the Holy Spirit at my sack, my conversion. God broke into my life in in a meaningful way. And then the Holy Spirit came and filled me with his power. And as an ongoing unfolding of my relationship with him. And I came into a relationship with the Holy Spirit, not just about God, but I began to know God and I began to know his joy. And he began to fill me with a joy. And some people say, Tim, how are you so happy? Well, I am naturally quite high on inspiration as one of my kind of personality streaks. But I would say beyond that, the, the, the way the Holy Spirit took up residence in my life Ha, ha, there's in it there's like a river that run, all I can describe it is like a river that runs through the bedrock of my life there's like a joy burning in me and it's something that holy, I just receive by from the Holy Spirit the gift um just the gift of tongues my I, my personal prayer language with God um I pray an awful lot in tongues when I'm ironing when I'm walking um all sorts of things through my life I just pray in the Holy Spirit and that just is like a generator of joy and strength on the inside, um, separate to the circumstances around me. And then another source of joy is abiding in Jesus and his words, his scripture abiding in me brings so much joy. And do you know what? Singing and praise and thanksgiving like Paul and Silas found was a pow powerful source of transforming joy that as we praise God we tap into his joy I love that from one um, from from uh, Zephaniah that he's singing over me he is rejoicing over me he's rejoicing over you and Paul and Silas connected into that within their prison cell. So this is what this fruit of joy is like. It is a sustaining strength. It is a settled quietedness that we know God is in control. And God will find a way with God. We will find a way through this. And it brings a note of victory into your world. And right now. You might be saying, Tim, joy feels a million miles away from you, from me. The circumstances I've been in, there's been nothing like joy. And, and, and I get that. And actually, there are days that are like that. But my question is, is it possible in that prison cell of how we're feeling, have I got a choice? And today I am learning that joy makes a way. That joy is a choice as well as a response. Joy is a choice that I can take up and I can begin to rejoice in my circumstances, despite of my circumstances, to access the goodness and the nature of my God right where I am. So let's just come right now. Let's just come right where we are. I'm just, I've just got a sense that God is with us right now. He's right with us across our living rooms. Holy Spirit, I thank you for filling every heart right now with this joy. Romans 15, 13. I'm just going to pray it over you right now. 
that may right now, God of all hope, fill you with joy right now in your living room, wherever you're watching this. May he fill you right now. Just open up your heart. Say, God, like opening up a tank. I want to receive from you right now. Lord, I thank you for your joy. I thank you for your peace. Just begin to thank him for his joy. Thank him for his peace. Lord, I want to trust you, God, with my situation. I give you the things that are troubling me right now. God, right now, my pain I'm feeling, sitting in this almost prison cell, God, I give it to you right now. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you, just like you did in that prison cell with Paul and Silas, would begin to break in right here, right now, bring your joy, bring your peace, bring the sense of your life right now into this situation. I thank you for your fruit of joy. And Romans finishes by saying, Romans 15, so that you may overflow with joy by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your filling right now, that we will be filled with your joy. Maybe for the first time, you'll say, Holy Spirit, I invite you afresh into my life with your power, with your touch. Holy Spirit, come. Oh God, and maybe today you never knew that knowing God was like this. And I want to invite you to give your life again. Maybe you once knew God and you walked away from him. Today's your moment to walk back into connection with God, to come back into that fresh place of knowing him. He loves you. He's for you. He's so excited for the potential in your life. He's saying, come on. Come on, let's go. Let's get out of this cell. And Lord, I thank you for breaking out. So Lord Jesus, we want to thank you that you've loved us. Thank you that you died for me. Thank you that you died to take away my self-centeredness. And I give you today my self-centeredness. God, forgive me for living life my own way and making a wreck of it and wrecking other people through it. But today, Jesus, I want to... I want to come home. I want to find a way back through that fence. I want to come home to you. And I thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me right now and giving me a brand new start and a brand new beginning. And I thank you, Jesus, for the joy I can know in knowing you. And it starts right now. Right now, you've given your life to Jesus for the first time. And I'm just so excited. We'd love you to get in touch um, to find out more about Jesus, to find out how you can connect into growing in more of him. So guys, let's go and let's go and live this week. Let's experience the fruit of God's kind of joy. Let's be open to receiving it from him. And do you know what? This joy you can give away to other people because when you're turning <laughs> lemons into lemonade in your world, which is you, what you do with joy, Oh my goodness, God can do so much. And let's, let, let's lean in with some stories about joy, shall we? If you experience some joy this week or you choose joy this week and it transforms the situation, get in touch and I'd love to hear from you. Guys, let's have a great week.